uh, that espouse the original doctrines of the apostolic church is typical throughout history. We find the same thing happening to the German Seventh-day Baptists in uh, the 1700s. Uh, going back, uh, we, we find that um, the Eckerlin brothers from Strasbourg, who also had Paulician influences, uh, even if tradition is exact, uh, were members of the Bektashi order, uh, they came, uh, the four brothers came with their mother to Pennsylvania and eventually founded the Ephrata Cloisters along with Conrad Beisel. Peter Miller joined the movement. Peter Miller came from the Reformed Church. Uh, he was a Trinitarian. Ephrata had not been Trinitarian uh, at all before uh, Peter Miller came. Um, Peter Miller uh, flattered Conrad Beisel and uh, inspired a wedge between uh, Conrad Beisel and the Eckerlin brothers. The Eckerlins were very um, effective people. They had good business sense. They uh, had created mills. They had a paper mill. They made their own paper. Uh, the effort to cloisters were very uh, influential in colonial Pennsylvania and the influence even uh, spread to other colonies. They had the first press in America. Uh, they had a um, gray, grain mill, grist mill. They had a school for uh, boys. Um, uh, the effort to cloister was a very important central place in the American colonies. When Peter uh, Miller uh, got control of things. The first thing he did was to oust the Eckerlins, and they were ousted according to the Chronicon because of their Ishmaelite faith, that is, their Unitarian stand. The writings of the Eckerlins have all been burned by Peter Miller and his followers. So we have uh, really only the record of the, the uh, opposition and the, um, there's a manuscript that was found uh, in Africa in the 1800s that was also in opposition to Peter Miller that tells us uh, more about the Eckerlins. And from, from these two sources, we note that uh, the Eckerlins, of course, were Sabbatarian. Uh, they um, were Unitarian, uh, moderate Unitarian. Their Ishmaelite faith uh, shows that clearly. Israel Eckerlin um, instituted Old Testament practices. Uh, all of Ephrata followed the uh, uh, Bible food laws. But uh, Israel Ek Eckerlin, uh, in fact, made himself um, a priestly robe, like the high priest's robe, with uh, a, press, a breastplate with all of the stones in it. And he officiated. Uh, at uh, all of the uh, important events in that robe. Apparently, although we have no written documentation, this would include the annual feasts. So, uh, Peter Miller, first of all, ousted the Eckerlins. Then he destroyed the grist mill, the paper mill, the school, all of the uh, um, means of support on the grounds that the Eckerlins had been carnal. And so we have to get rid of carnal things. He brought in the Trinity, and he ran the, the Ephratite community into the ground. In only a few decades, it had disappeared. The German Seventh-day Baptists today are Trinitarian. So this infiltration of uh, uh, enemy, uh, enemies into the church is very typical. If we go to the Seventh-day Baptists in the preceding century, just a few decades earlier, uh, the Newport Church, the first uh, Seventh-day Baptist church in America, from that church uh, came um, the Rogers family joined the church. John Rogers joined the church. He was living in New London 
and uh, the Newport church was some distance away. And uh, so uh, Newport was in Rhode Island, New London is in Connecticut. The Martha's Vineyard Church was established. Martha's, Vineyard's church, Martha's Vineyard Church was established in uh, 1685, um, less than a score of years after the Newport Seventh-day Baptist Church was established. And John Rogers became the first uh, a pastor there. Uh, they got along very well until a Quaker visitor from uh, England visited them and uh, infiltrated them with uh, other doctrines. And eventually, uh, they gave up the Sabbath. And the Rogerine Church um, continued to exist up into the early 1800s but they had given up the Sabbath through infiltration. And they had had a very strong witness for the Sabbath in the beginning. Um, going back even earlier uh, to uh, England, we find that um, uh, Daniel Katz, I believe is his name, uh, David Daniel Katz, wrote a book about the Sabbatarians in England. Uh, it's published at the um, Jerusalem University Press. And he gives extensive uh, documentation uh, about the 17th century Sabbatarians in England. It documents the group that was established before Milliard that uh, went uh, to the continent and finally disappeared. These people were also observers of the annual feasts uh, and uh, other biblical practices. And uh, they uh, finally disappeared. We know not how. But uh, he also documents uh, the infiltration of the Jesuits in the 1600s in the Baptist churches not only Seventh-day Baptist, but Baptist. Um, some of the Jesuits who were infiltrating the churches were caught. I suppose people would like to believe that all of them were caught. I somehow doubt that. The infiltration was apparently, obviously I would say, successful. But uh, there was a Seventh-day Baptist church in York a man came to the church claiming to be a Jew. And he wanted to convert to Christianity, and he wanted to join uh, the Seventh-day Baptist Church in York. And uh, after uh, all sorts of uh, interesting events, it came out that the man was a Jesuit. He was, of course, the Jesuits were founded for the purpose of infiltrating Protestantism. That was the purpose of the order. I can't uh, imagine why anyone would doubt that uh, they would not act on uh, the purpose for which they were actually founded. Well, in any case, uh, this man turned out to be a Jesuit, and he was also turned out of the church. How many more were not discovered is shown by the fact that the Baptist churches in every uh, statement of faith that has ever been written, insofar as I know, have uh, expressed a belief in the Trinity, despite the fact that so many of the early Baptists were Unitarian, at least moderate uh, Unitarian, and some even radical Unitarians. So we find that uh, this uh, way of relating to the, to the true faith has been one of watching. Uh, whenever a church or group arises that is keeping the Sabbath, that is uh, moderate, Unitarian, that's following the feasts, that's following the food laws, that believes in eternal grace, these, these various factors come together in a group the more of these factors that are present, the faster the group is infiltrated.